but if you're sort of person that feels like they've been dieting all their life, but you've only lost a few pounds, honestly, you probably haven't been dieting. You haven't been in an extreme energy deficit where your body is going to even need to think about this kind of stuff. Welcome back to another episode of the Smart Strength Training Podcast, the podcast that looks at popular trends through an evidence-based lens. And this week's topic really does need to be looked at through an evidence-based lens. We're going to be talking about reverse dieting um, because reverse dieting is one of those trends in fitness right now. Every trainer is talking about if you reverse diet, you can boost metabolism, people can eat more calories in the future and still be able to lose weight. And it sounds great. Sounds often too good to be true. And a lot of time with things that sound too good to be true, um, it probably is. And in this case, it definitely is. That being said, do continue to listen because there is a situation some people actually might find they benefit from reverse dieting. Uh, And I'll explain why. But let's go through the science first. But first up, let's just talk about what reverse dieting is, just in case you haven't heard of it. So the idea is that at the end of a prolonged, successful diet phase, you reverse out of it. So you go up strategically, a gradual increase in calories week by week. And it's usually a 100 calorie increase per week until you get back to maintenance calories. Um, And your maintenance calories, that means the amount of energy your body requires at rest to sustain life. So to to basically maintain body weight. Because the idea is that you don't want to have too much weight regain. And proponents of the reverse diet, they use big claims, they often use some fancy terminology, it sounds very smart. So claim number one, reverse dieting will boost your metabolism, everyone's favorite sleazy sales pitch these days. Two, is that you'll be able to diet on more calories in the future. And claim number three, is that you can continue to lose weight whilst eating more calories. Um, And some of the terminology you'll hear used is the expression adaptive thermogenesis, which is the process where the body downregulates metabolism as a product of dieting. I'll get to that in just a moment. And then terminology number two is often it regulates hormones, usually the satiety hormones, leptin and ghrelin. And I guess the problem with a lot of these things is that there are some half-truths in those expressions. But what bothers me a little bit with this kind of stuff is I wonder if coaches that promote things like reverse dieting, are they just not educated in this stuff and they're just too lazy to fact check it? Or are they purposefully misleading things? Because it's got some quite cool things about it. If you start telling people that I can regulate hunger, hunger, improve or increase metabolism and you can diet on more calories in the future, that's quite a good sell. So I do sometimes worry about why people mislead uh, so much. Because if reverse dieting did all those things, then it'd be really easy to find research on it, right? There'd be tons of high quality research all pointing in the same direction. Wrong. The evidence is at best you could say it's mixed. And to be honest, there just really isn't an awful lot of high uh, quality evidence on reverse dieting. And I have my own thoughts on that, which I'll explain and express in a moment. Um, And let's also state like, where's this all come from? What is reverse dieting? What's it all about? It comes from bodybuilding. And it's also worth pointing out that this is not new. The reverse dieting started in the early 2000s. So we've had 20 odd years of anecdotal experiment, let's say, with it. So why did it need to be created in the first place? So Bodybuilders and physique athletes, they diet down to extremely low levels of body fat. If you've ever seen a bodybuilder on stage, we're talking about for men, two, three percent, for women, five to seven percent body fat. Insane levels of um, lean body composition. And it's notorious in those space that after people go on stage, they do the competition, they what we call bounce back post comp and they regain a lot of weight. So reverse dieting was sort of hypothesized as a way of managing competitors' energy intake to try and control that weight regain. And it has always had fairly mixed results just from that community. Some people do honestly swear by it, and I'll explain why I think that is the case in a bit. But a lot of people just discredit it and say it doesn't really work. So Let's just discuss. So you've got this idea of reverse dieting, gradually increasing calories up. 
what would that look like then? So let's say that you start your diet and your maintenance calories, remember maintenance calories is the weight, the energy you need to consume to maintain your body weight. Let's say you started on a maintenance calories of 2000 and over 18 weeks, you dieted down to 1200 calories. And let's say you were successful. And at the end of that diet phase, you wanted to reverse diet back out. And the idea here would be that you would go up 100 calories per week. So in this situation, this example, over eight weeks before you get to maintenance. So that means you're still dieting for eight weeks because anything below 2000 calories is still a deficit in energy. So having just done an 18 week diet phase, you're now having to do an eight week reverse diet where I am still actually dieting versus just simply returning to maintenance calories the next day and enjoying life at 2000 calories, which is why a lot of bodybuilders just don't do it because dieting, let's be really honest, sucks. And, and prolonging the process for eight weeks doesn't really make any sense. And it's not got evidence behind it to really back it. But what I will say, because a lot of people, like proponents of reverse dieting, will say that, yeah, but if you do that, you're guaranteed to regain weight. So I've got a few more thoughts about this, but the main thing I think is really worthwhile pointing out. Let's go back to that example. 2,000 calories started, went down to 1,200 calories, lost weight in that process. So let's say in that situation, that person started their diet at 70 kilos and they dieted down to 10 kilos. So they're now a 10 kilo lighter human frame. It takes less energy to propel a lighter frame human being around the world. And I crunched the numbers before doing this podcast, roughly around 200 calories less per day to sustain that weight. So when you're recalculating your maintenance energy, you have to factor that in. And historically, that wasn't often done. People often just didn't even bother doing anything, just went back to eating normally for a little bit, and then got back into their next diet. Or at best, they just went back to their old maintenance. So if you just go back to your new maintenance, there really is no need to prolong that process because gradually increasing your calories does nothing from a metabolic standpoint. And let's explain that why, because metabolism is a word that frustrates me a little bit because it gets misused, misquoted, and people, coaches I'm saying now, quite clearly do not understand what they mean by metabolism. So claim number one that I stated at the start of this podcast was reverse dieting boosts metabolism. So what do we mean by that? So it takes energy to break down food. So the more food you consume, the more energy you will need to break that food down. That's the first increase in metabolic rate. The next is the more energy you have day to day, the more you will move around day to day. If you've heard of NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, is basically step counts and fidgeting, the amount you move, the more energy you have available to you from food, the more you're naturally going to have a desire to move. Plus, this is more long-term thing. If I consume more calories, I can build muscle. I can't build muscle at 1200 calories. I'm just preserving life at that stage. But when I bring myself back up to maintenance, I can start to build muscle. All those things are going to increase metabolic rate. But just going back to maintenance calories, going back to your 2000 calories or 200 less because you've just calculated the fact you're now a lighter frame human being does that without prolonging the, the suffering of being in a diet. So claim number two is that reverse dieting means you can now diet on more calories in the future. That is just a lie. That is factually incorrect. There's absolutely no way that you can be a lighter framed human being and diet on more calories in the future. The only way that could physically be possible is if someone was to sustain an increase and a large amount of additional muscle mass because muscle needs more energy at rest to sustain it. So therefore, the more muscle you have on you, the more energy you burn at rest. But that wouldn't be possible on a lighter frame human being. You would naturally have gained a bit of, uh, sorry, gained weight whilst gaining muscle mass. That's just factually incorrect. So, um, and then you can, the claim number three is that you can continue to lose weight whilst reverse dieting. Well, of course you can, because you're still in an energy deficit. You are still, by definition, dieting. The whole point is you have dieted down to that weight. You might as well just return to maintenance. Why would you delay that process? Uh, let's discuss then some of the terminology and debunk that as well. So adaptive thermogenesis is that word that gets thrown around in the evidence-based world, sorry, in the, <laughs> in the reverse dieting world. 
and it's got sounds really good and it is a real thing um Adaptive thermogenesis is the normal process where the body downregulates metabolic function due to dieting. One of these we've already discussed, which is a lighter frame human being requires less energy at rest. That is a downregulation to metabolic function. Um, if we consume less energy, we move less. Again, I mentioned it already. That is a downregulation of um, your metabolism. Um, and if you lost a lot of weight, it stands a chance you have lost a significant amount of muscle mass in the same in the same uh, time period. And of course, like I said before, muscle is more metabolically active. So the less muscle you have on you, the the less your meta or your the, your, your lower your metabolism. So again. All those things are true, but reverse dieting doesn't change any of that. Just going back to your regular energy maintenance would do that a lot better and without suffering. Terminology number two is to regulate hormones, especially the satiety hormones, so your hunger hormones. Hopefully you're probably going to sense where I'm going to go with this. If I just ate back at my maintenance calories and have recalculated, so I have um, established that I need to consume less calories based on the loss in body weight. I'd have a much better job at managing my hunger in that process. And this is the thing, this is, I am going to state right now, this is an opinion of mine. There's a reason that reverse dieting has not been well researched. It's been around for ages. There is no clear mechanism to why gradually taking your calories up would yield any kind of result like scientists researchers they are intelligent people they're not going to research something that basically is pointless there's no real reason to pump money into research it's expensive to research so i really can't see there being and maybe i'm wrong i can't see there being loads more research into reserved into reverse dieting for me it's kind of a closed book um just go back to the calories that you should do to maintain your body weight that being said I've been very harsh. I've been quite animated in how uh, I've answered that or spoken about this. I actually think there is a situation where reverse or some kind of staggered increase in calories actually could be sensible. So if you've been dieting for a while, it's really hard to state what I think a while is. Certainly, if you've been dieting for 16 weeks plus and you've lost a significant amount of weight and you are mentally very stressed and very anxious about any perceived weight gain. Because what do we know? We know that the second you start eating more food, you're going to store more water because generally when we start eating more food, we're going to eat more carbohydrates. Um, carbohydrates by default will make us hold on to more water as just a, the nature of the fact the way that carbohydrates are, uh, are formed in the body and we're going to store more glycogen as well so that can cause a lot of stress and anxiety so for managing the psychological impacts of taking people out of a diet phase up then I think it is actually probably quite a smart thing to do but I would do it in just a couple of stages, 250 calories every two weeks or so, not the 100 calories like promoted. So let's be clear, taking up 100 calories at a time just makes no sense. And to be really honest, is borderline impossible. Unless you eat exactly the same thing every single day, managing a 100 calorie increase in food is really, really hard. It's not the sort of thing that you and I, normal people, are going to be able to do, which is really why it is the realm of competitive physique athletes only. And to be really honest, in that community, a lot of those nutritional practices, you could glance at those and say they're kind of borderline eating disorders. So we have to be very, very careful with these kind of like conversations around stuff, uh, around calories. First starting, let's be really, really clear then, it's a myth. It's a lie. Um, it sounds plausible. It contains some hard, some sort of half truths, and it's actually quite a good way to spot an influencer that doesn't really understand nutrition and uh, physiology. Because if someone is promoting the benefits of reverse dieting outside of just the psychological benefits, I would state that's a pretty good reason to unfollow. Um, and a final note, just to, to clarify, if, if you still have heard all this and you still want to go and do a reverse diet, what are we talking about when, when we're saying people that are going to start a reverse diet? It's for someone that's been on a prolonged diet phase. They've been fairly restrictive towards the end of their diet. They've lost a significant amount of weight and they are anxious about returning back to normal eating. In that situation, yeah, you're the sort of person that probably could think about a staggered increase in calories for 
managing the psychological impact of increasing food intake, but also just to learn what it's like to eat a bit more food and to do it sensibly. Because the reality is you can't just go back to eating pizza and ice cream. You could, to a degree, you have more flexibility, but it would make logical sense to eat through more whole food, uh, not eating too much processed food, try and get meal volume up really sensibly. And doing it gradually could just be a sensible way for you as a person to understand how to manage the habits and the lifestyle around it. I fully on board with that. Anyone promoting that in the reverse dieting world, absolutely great. Anyone stating anything outside of that, I think is very, very questionable. But if you're a sort of person that feels like they've been dieting all their life, but you've only lost a few pounds, honestly, you probably haven't been dieting. You haven't been in an extreme energy deficit where your body is going to even need to think about this kind of stuff. And if you've only lost, you've dieted, let's say you've lost five kilos, you don't need to really worry. It's only a situation where someone's dieted down and lost a significant amount of body fat or they've dieted for a sustained period of time. So you just don't necessarily need to think about it. So like I said, reverse dieting is a topic that a lot of people have asked me to cover on this podcast. So it's one that you might have gathered through the tone of my voice that I, um, I have some very strong feelings on because it can get quite frustrating. Like I said, I like to look at things through an evidence-based lens and it took me a few seconds to look up the, the research into reverse dieting and to find that it really is poorly researched. So we are going to promote things. We need to make sure that it is at least backed by some kind of evidence, not just anecdote. And reverse dieting is very much the realm of anecdote social media. And just to remind you, it's been around for years. It's just that the kids these days need something you need to talk about. So it's popular and it has been for the last couple of years. But like a lot of these things, I'm sure it, uh, it will die off and then come back in 10 years time. That's it from me. And if you need help with your own nutrition and training, I am available for online one-on-one -on -one training. Ooh.